Okay, I can't find my copy of Night. It's here. So Night is one of the options that you're going to be able to read, and I will explain that here in a second. So, why am I so unprepared? <laughs> Here's what I want to do. Can someone run down and grab me my coffee from the coffee room? Does anyone want to volunteer? Thanks, Zoe. So do you know where it is? Okay, so it's in the library. You go straight into the back, and there's a door that's always open with all the copy machines. And against the counter, against the wall, it'll have a stack with my name on it. It'll say Bora. Okay, thank you. So I wanted to bring that because I've got the schedule for this next quarter, and you can kind of see how things are laid out. But basically, you are, now, you are going to be reading, instead of reading a book report for the first three or four weeks of the quarter, you're going to be reading another World War II book. So in addition to Mouse, which we're all reading together, you're going to choose which nonfiction book about World War II you would like to read. There, will be, there are four options. Um, they're different degrees of difficulty and they are about different subjects. And then with these options, you will have an argumentative question that you'll be considering as you read. And ultimately, you'll be doing research and you'll be reading outside material and you'll be reading this book to create an essay, to write an essay about your argumentative topic that's been assigned to you. So I'm gonna tell you about the books and I'm gonna tell you about the topic that's gonna to be assigned. And then you can decide how to make your choice. Um, you're gonna be in book groups. So maybe you wanna make your choice where you'll be with a friend. Um, you, you could make your choice based on just the book that you're the most interested in. You could judge how much time you have to commit to this project and make a choice based on page numbers <laughs> or difficulty of reading. Um, or you could make a choice based on if you're interested in the argumentative question. And if it were me, I would actually choose that last option because all four of these books are excellent, really, really good. I would be, make my choice based on, is this a paper that I would actually want to write about? So the first book is, let's do Hiroshima first. The first book is Hiroshima. Has anybody read this before? I'd also like you to try and read something you haven't read before. So this is a book about um, uh, the bombing of Hiroshima. It is from a reporter's perspective. For a long time, they weren't really letting American reporters sort of, um, have a freedom of press around this topic. There was kind of strict guidelines on who could go into the country and what they could what they could write about it. So this is kind of the first journalistic impression we got of the effects of the atomic bomb in Japan. So it's quite gruesome because the effects of radiation and the effects of bombing is quite gruesome. And it talks about these different characters um, that lived in Hiroshima and what the effect on their life was for at the moment and then for years, years in the future. So it's this really engaging story um, about, I want to say it's four different people which you kind of follow and see how they how they experience the bombing of Hiroshima and the Japanese people. Um, so that's that one. And the argumentative question that goes with that one, I'll put it up here. John, Hershey. You want to know page numbers? Here, I'm going to give you the page numbers of this one because this is more accurate. 152. Um, and then we're going to say, the question for this one is how or if we can justify acts of war with known civilian casualties. So, you know, when we commit an act of war, are we able, if we know that that act of war, like let's say it's a drone strike and we know that there's gonna be 30 people who are just civilians that had nothing, did nothing wrong, that will be killed in that drone strike, can we or should we try and justify that and how could we justify that? That's kind of the topic, the angle that you're going with Hiroshima. Okay, the second book is called If This Is a Man. This is two books. So If This Is a Man is, again, about 150 pages. Over here, it's not made for indirect discourse. This is by a guy named Primo Levi. 
he was a chemist, a kind of prominent chemist in Italy, and he was working for the um, like counter, like a kind of rebels. They were sort of an underground rebel group fighting against fascism in Italy, and he was captured towards the end of World War II and taken to Auschwitz. So his story is about his experience from the time he is captured in Italy, so the journey and uh, to Auschwitz. And this book is kind of um, detached. It's interesting. It's not as gruesome as actually the other two, not as gruesome as Hiroshima or the other concentration camp memoir that I have. Um, and instead, he kind of has this very business-like attitude towards it where he's thinking about, thank you so much, Zoe, yeah, where he is thinking about, um, you know, how they traded goods and how they got along that way and how they kind of made do in this situation that was so horrific and how it just became like kind of everyday life. The other thing about Primo Levi is he wasn't a very religious person. So there isn't anything in this one about like, um, you know, Jewish religion at all. It is just like really day to day, this is what it was like to live in the concentration camp. This was what it was, what it was like to starve. This is how I got extra portions of bread. Like it's almost like um, procedural that way. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, a little bit, it almost was. Where did that come from? Okay, so the question for this one is going to be, what role does dehumanization play in human rights abuses. That's the one I did for this. Let me make sure. Yes. What role does dehumanization play in human rights abuses? So this one is going to be about looking at how, you know, they stripped them of their clothes, they took all their possessions. He talks a lot about how possessions is what kind of makes him a man. So if this is a man, that's kind of what the title is. If this is a man, then what do we really think of what humanity is on both sides? Um, so there's that one. So it's a Holocaust memoir. That's by Primo Levi. Um, the other Holocaust memoir is called Night. This is the one that is in the book room, but I will get it for us by Ellie Bissell. This one is a little bit more emotional than Primo Levi's. So it's, it's more, um, you know, about his family and how he lost his family and what his religious, what role his religion played in um, his circumstances. Has anybody read Night before? That one's maybe the one that you, okay. Um, this one is like, it's probably around the same pages actually. That, I guess is not a good way to make your decision by page number because they're all pretty much the same except for the last one. Um, but this one is like, it's one that occasionally will have students say that was too gruesome and depressing for me. Um, you know, this is the one, this is the book that talks about bodies piling up and what happens to skin when it is cold for too long. And it, it really gets into those kind of gory details. So if that's something that you want to avoid, but you still want to read about what it was like in a concentration camp, then you, I would go for Primo Levi. If that sounds like that kind of emotional language sounds interesting to you, then I would go for Knight if you're trying to talk, decide between the two. And the question that we're going to have with Knight is more about more political with it. When should America get involved in global human rights abuse? So Ellie Wiesel ended up being a um, advocate for America getting more involved in global affairs. So, you know, when there was um, a war in Sudan, it was, and it was a genocide in Sudan. Elie Wiesel was saying, America needs to go and get involved and they need to stop this. And there are other people who are saying, no, because we don't have direct interests in Sudan, they need to work that problem out for themselves, right? So that's why I chose that question with this writer. He has a lot to say about that kind of stuff. Okay, the last book is called Eichmann in Jerusalem. Hannah Arendt. This one's a little bit longer. A lot bit longer, quite honestly. This one's about 300 pages. 
All right, so this one, Eichmann was the guy who ran the trains for Hitler. Um, he was the guy who organized all the transportation of Jewish people to concentration camps. And he was put on trial after World War II. They captured him, um, they put him on trial in, uh, in Jerusalem, and they, he was on trial for war crimes. And his attitude was like, I didn't kill anyone. I didn't, I wasn't in favor of gas chambers and I wasn't in favor in, of inhuman treatment. I was just the guy who made sure the transportation worked. And so this book describes his defense of that. Like, I just made sure that, you know, the train, this train got to this place on time. I did all of these little, like, kind of um, technical things. And so I shouldn't be blamed. I'm not a war criminal. I was just doing my job, right? Um, and then it also goes through how each of the countries that Germany invaded reacted to um, the invasion. So Denmark resisted for uh, actually pretty successfully. They hid Jews in their homes. They kind of all decided to resist. Um, but then a place like France was kind of like, yeah, take all the Jews. Like they kind of just let, let them come in. And I mean, they had a bloody fight. And But when they lost, they submitted to the removal of Jews. So... So let me tell you about this book a little bit. This is a higher reading level than these three. I think that a lot of you could read it, but if you're like a little bit worried about your reading comprehension, I wouldn't choose this one. Um, it's a little bit drier than the other three too. So Hiroshima's got all of the like character details in it about these different people who lived in Japan. And these two are memoirs, so you really get to know those two characters. But Eichmann, just because of the type of person he was, he kind of stays removed from us. Like he's like kind of this boring guy who ran trains, you know? This book is the book that invented a phrase called the banality of evil which means like evil is boring. The most evil stuff is the stuff that seems totally normal and boring. Um, but if you are like a history buff, or if you've read a lot of stuff about World War II and you wanna kind of take it to the next level, I think this is the best book written about the Holocaust that I've ever read. Um, it's, it's, more of a, it, it's more of a deep thinker than the other three. So if you're up for a challenge, choose this one. We might only have a couple people choose it, which I totally understand. Like, you know, maybe you don't have the commitment. If we have two people choose it, then that's good. If only one person chooses it, then I'll need you to need you to choose something else. But if you're a kind of ambitious reader and you're like, yeah, I'm up for the challenge. I think I'm like, I think I'm ready to think about World War II on this other level, then go for this one. And the question with this one is, um, I'm still struggling with how to word this, so I might change the wording of this, but basically it is how should a country um, punish or acknowledge an unjust war? So this is going to be a question that has a lot to do with like memorials and uh, uh, trials afterwards and how you recognize war criminals and so on. Okay. And monuments. I think this question, I'm going to have some articles that you read about like uh, Confederate monuments. So if that is something that you're interested in, it will be under here. All right. So what I want you to do is we need computers. Let's have the first person in each row grab computers from their room. I'll move this, sorry guys. Mm -hmm. 